SH travels with geography. In this episode, we take a tour of Montreal. Play a round of GeoGuessr. And deliberately strand the secondary fives in an underground maze. It's really impressive, so I think we're going in the right direction. I'm Melissa Brian, and you're watching SHTV. Welcome to SHTV. I'm your host, Melissa Brian. I'm standing in front of one of the most recognizable landmarks in Montreal, the Notre Dame Basilica, which is perfect for our episode on geography. Our first segment is going to show why geography is necessary. Geography is important because we can learn about the cultures all the different places in the world, and to have a better understanding of society. Let's talk about Somalia. Somalia is a country in East Africa. Its capital is Mogadishu. Somalia is composed as a single homogeneous ethnic group. Homogeneous means that a culture is similar. The spoken languages in the country are Somali, Standard Arabic, and English. Some national dishes they eat are sambusa and baris iskukaris. Family is extremely important in the Somali community. The focus of Somali culture is on the family. Family is more important than the individual in all aspects of life. Somalis will live with their parents until they get married. Somalia is an unknown country because of its unstable government, the terrorist attacks, and it's the second poor country in the world. Now I'm going to say why is Comoros unpopular. Comoros is unpopular because there was a lot of human trafficking and crimes happening. Their population is 876,437 people. The culture of the Comoros is closely linked to the Islamic world, even in the architecture which helps to define the so-called Indian Ocean style. There are mosques even by the sea, as well as places of gathering the elderly outdoors. Comoros is located in the Indian Ocean at the northern entrance of the Mozambique Channel. Also, their main religion is Islam. Tuvalu is an island country in the Polynesian subregion of Oceania in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, the total land area of Tuvalu is about 10 square miles. Sources from 2017 say that the population is 11,192. This puts the population density at around 1,232 people per square miles, making it one of the most densely populated countries in the world. The population of this country has grown at a slow but steady pace since the early 2000s. The major ethnic group of Tuvalu is Polynesian, the other ethnic group is Micronesian, but the, this group makes up just 5.6% of the total population. The nation has two national languages. Most inhabit inhabitants uh, speak Tuvalian, which is a Polynesian language. English is the other official language, but it is not commonly used. Approximately 97% of the population are part of the Congregational Christian Church of Tuvalu. Although most inhabitants practice this religion, the nation has freedom of religion. This is uh, Georgia Pavlakitis. I was born here. I am Greek, uh, traditional Greek. My parents were both Greek and they did immigrate from Greece uh, about uh, maybe 50 years ago. I was brought up with all the uh, religious and traditional Greek uh, annotations that come with the culture and we do speak Greek at home, we have managed to retain the language and I've taught that to my children. We eat traditional Greek food, we also interchange that with uh, French Canadian. Um, the children, my children speak both Greek, English and French and we do have our traditional Easter and Christmas uh, foods that come with the, each holiday, for example, eggs, red eggs for Easter, uh, lamb on the spit again for Easter, Christmas time, it's church, it's uh, the, the, the whole community comes together. So we're very strong in that, in the sense of a tradition. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hamid Alavi. I'm from Iran. I was born in Iran. I moved to Canada when I was 10 years old. The reason we moved was for better freedom, better education level, and the uh, most important thing was we want to have a better life, more freedom. Uh, 
it wasn't such much of a thing over there at the time that I was growing up. Our favorite food is mainly rice, chicken obviously, meat, but we do have rice with majority of our food. Now I'm going to say what is the best spot to travel on vacations. I think the best spot, in my opinion, is the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. The Great Barrier Reef is one of the most undisputed best vacation spots for anyone who wants the opportunity to glimpse one of the most incredible marvels of nature. Tourists will be able to enjoy the amazing sights of unique marine animals and plants interacting with each other in perfect harmony. You can dive or snorkel in the area to really get up close and personal with the local flora and fauna. The countries with the most tornadoes are New Zealand, the US, and Canada. The countries with the most hurricanes are China, Vietnam, the US, Japan, and the Philippines. The countries with the most earthquakes are China, Japan, the Philippines, and the US. The countries with the most typhoons are China, the Philippines, and Japan. And the countries with the most flooding are China, Vietnam, and Zimbabwe. Hello, my name is Meher Khashkushian, and this is Harun Kabajian from Saigon. So now I'm gonna show him the flag, and he has to guess it. This is the flag. That is the Democratic Republic of Congo. Yay! I'm standing in the middle of Old Montreal. Recently, we had the chance to visit a number of cultural districts. Here they are. As the importance of geography, there's also fun to it, like how Montreal has various different amount of cultures. So we did a Montreal tour of three famous places, Chinatown, Old Port, and Little Italy to experience the different cultures.
Hello everyone, today we have with us Alec Alec Polat and today we will be showing him flags and he will be naming the country We will be starting off uh, pretty easy What is this country? <laughs> Correct What is this country? <laughs> Brazil Correct What is this country? Colombia Colombia What is this Lebanon. country? Lebanon what is this country? <laughs> huh? What is Syria, it? Syria. When you travel across the world, you get the chance to see all kinds of beautiful places like this one. We got the chance to ask someone who's done tons of traveling five questions. Here is Melissa Benzian. My name is Melissa Benjamin. I work as an accountant and I just love to travel. Um, I started when I was younger, I made a list of the places I wanted to go to and over the years I've just added on to that list. Um, the past couple years it's been harder obviously with the pandemic, I haven't really, really gone anywhere so I am looking forward to starting up again and, and seeing new places. It's just great to see new places all the time. Do you think traveling helps one widen their knowledge of geography? Yes, I definitely do think that travel um, helps with our knowledge of geography. Um, I mean, you can always just look at a map, obviously, and see what's where, but I find in going places and traveling around and taking the train from like, east to west, north to south, or just the plane, whatever, you just do get a better sense of um, where what countries are where or what cities are where so yes i do think travel would, would help with our knowledge of geography out of all the places you visited which culture have you appreciated the most um for what culture i've appreciated the most that's a difficult question um I find when you're just going on a quick trip, well not quick trip, but on a trip you don't necessarily spend a lot of time immersed in the culture. Um, if I had to pick, I guess I would go with Italy. Just Europe in general I just absolutely love, but in Italy they're just a lot more relaxed I guess. Like here you're always rush, 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 have to be on time to go somewhere. Um, but in Italy, they're very like, oh, don't worry about it. Like, there'll be another train or I don't know. They're just, they're just a lot more relaxed and uh, just in everything. And obviously, the food is great too. <laughs> Who doesn't love Italy? And uh, just everything about Italy. What was the most challenging expedition you have ever ventured? So my most challenging expedition would for sure have to be the very first trip I took like without my parents and that wasn't a down south trip. Um, I went backpacking through Europe with two of my really good friends in university. So that was seven weeks backpacking through Europe, staying in youth, host youth hostels on a budget, um, taking the train. Um, you know, sometimes like we have to, we had an idea of an itinerary in mind, but something would happen, the train would be fully booked, we couldn't go where we wanted to go, and we would just flip it around and be like, okay, instead of going to Spain, we're going to go to Germany now. So it was definitely a challenge. It was definitely something, um, it was just an amazing experience at the end of the day, uh, definitely out of my comfort zone. Um, but yeah, it was definitely a great experience. Um, we were 24-7 with the same people the whole time, but we, we definitely we definitely enjoyed our trip and, and, and we're still fun. <laughs> what were the most contrasting places you visited geography-wise? So geographically speaking, I would say the most contrasting places I've been through, if I understand correctly, um, would be um, I went to Australia, which is definitely far, far, pretty far away. The furthest I've been is Australia. And I've also been to Patagonia, 
uh, which is Chile and Argentina, and it goes down to Ushuaia, which is considered the end of the world, is what they call it. Um, so those are both in the southern hemisphere, though. So if you want to go with the north part? I've, I've been to Europe, so I've been to the Scandinavian countries. Would be probably the northest I've been. So like Sweden and um, uh, Sweden and Finland. But yeah, those definitely spread out there. <laughs> Why do you think it's important for a person to explore the world and get out of their comfort zone? I definitely think it's important for people to um, explore the world. Um, it definitely takes you out of your comfort zone. Uh, it's good to see different cultures, different places. It also just is a good like step back from your own reality. Just, um, just that's it. Just to, just to see the world. Um, Thank you so much. Hello, my name is Mayor Khashoggian, and this is... Arli Kelayan, I'm in Sydney. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a flag, and just, if you can, guess it. Okay, the flag is this. You're probably trying to guess where I am from the landmark behind me. In that vein, we challenge a geography teacher to a round of GeoGuessr. What do we have now? I think we have geography. Oh man, I hate geography! 3.28 a.m. I really don't feel like doing geography today. Why, man? Geography can be fun. No, seriously, though. There are so many things you could do with geography. Really? 12 seconds later. Okay, guys, today you're gonna work on your map. Yes. Sir, I really don't feel like doing this right now. Oh, uh, don't say that. Okay. Geography is very fun. There's no way you can convince me that geography is fun. Yeah, it's really boring. True, true. Okay, you guys, you three, are gonna stay after class. I'll show you how geography may be very fun. 2,000 years later. Okay, guys, I'll show you how geography may be a new thing. There are some games, like Globe, Flag, GeoGuessr, Wordle. Those are new games that you can play online. It's going to be very fun. But we're still not convinced. True, true. Yeah, it's still boring when you do geography. Let's see. Wait! <laughs> yeah. What if we challenge Mr. Fantik to a game of all of these games? And if we win, we are convinced that geography is not fun. But if we lose, uh, sorry, yeah, if we lose, that means geography is fun. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Sir, you agree? Okay. All awesome. Right. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, that's an easy one. The falls. Niagara Falls. This way. Yeah. Good guess. Easy guess. Yeah, good guess. Yeah, easy. See? How fun can it be? Okay, this. Doesn't look like Angola. Let's see. My capital. Yes. Ah, that's it.
All right, so we did win, but I have to admit we did have some fun. Yeah, it turns out geography is actually easy. Yeah. I hope you guys learned a lesson. Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. Hello, my name is Melech Shushan, and this is Martha Georgian, a Sec 4 student. And now I'm going to show him a flag and he has to guess it. This is the flag. Niger. Thank you. I'm standing in the Montreal World Trade Center, which is one of the most photogenic spots in the entire Montreal underground. This was one of the locations for the next challenge in the Secondary 5 Final Showdown. Your challenge is, from where you are right now, to find and record as many murals similar to the ones in back of me and report back to the finish line when the 30 minutes are done. So we found this as well and it's very creepy but it goes even further and we can see how Creepy monsters there are, so yeah, that's it. It's so weird and special that we found three murals on one wall. This is the first one, it looks like paint splashes. I'm standing outside the McGill gates where the geography challenge will start. The following challenge is governed by the following rules. The first rule is that the participants are not allowed to run. Secondly, they do not have access to their own cell phones. The third rule is that five key landmarks must be spotted before making it to the finish line. The final and most important rule for this challenge is that the contestants cannot go outside until it is time to reach the finish line. With all the rules explained, the challenge will now begin. Secondary Fives, are you ready for your challenge? just got our first clue to the first landmark. It says, if you're a She-Hulk with enormous feet, you'll need this for a night out on the town. This is the picture. And now we need to head over there. Let's go. If you're a She-Hulk with enormous feet, you'll need these for a night out on the town. It's a landmark. If you're a She-Hulk with enormous feet, you'll need these for a night out on the town. Located in the Cour Mont-Royal, one of Montreal's fanciest shopping centers, this set of giant shoes along with a massive handbag is the first landmark.
advice. What are you looking for? I have no clue. Read the clue. If you're a sheep, I'll run Okay. You and me lose your night out on the town. You're a she hulk with one spear. You're she Shoes. Boots. Shoes. Socks. Okay, what song did you see? That's a lot. Shoes. We found our first clue. She Hulk has very big feet, so she needs a very big. It even fits me inside. Yeah, that's it. So we found our first clue. It's a ginormous shoe for She Hulk, obviously. So on to the next. Clue. You may slip a time or two, but it won't matter when you're the tallest than the rest. That's the second clue. But you may slip a time or two, but it won't matter when you're taller than the rest. You may slip a time or two, but it won't matter when you're taller than the rest. Located in one of the tallest buildings in Montreal, Mille de la Gauchetière, this skating rink attracts thousands of people every year. Let's just hope they don't slip. This is the second landmark. Is it like stairs or like nestle? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, have you figured out where you're going? Not yet. Okay, okay what do you think? Where do you think you're going? Place Bonavent too. Place Bonavent too. There are a lot of clues. Like, some sort of ice strength because the clue says you may slip a time or two, but you're taller than the rest. After walking and walking and walking and getting lost a few times, we thought it was an ice rink. Okay. Uh, people were divided for a long time, but in 1989, that came tumbling down. People were divided for a long time, but in 1989, that came tumbling down. Located in the middle of Montreal's financial district, this is a piece of the Berlin Wall. Gifted to the city of Montreal for their 350th birthday, this wall was a symbol of division, but that came crashing down in 1989 as both sides of Germany united. This is the third landmark on the way to the finish line. Alright, so we think now that uh, we found something. We think it's um, at uh, Square Victoria that something happened in 1989, and that's when it crumbled down. We, we think it might be that. We're thinking historical, and there was a city and the national, so we think okay. international. There's something to do. Oh, it looks like staircases to me. Yeah. So 
so we found our third clue and it's the Berlin Wall and when we walk around it we can see there are more graffitis on it a journey wouldn't be complete without a stroll through a bunch of trees, but maybe they might go well with the first fashion accessory you picked up. A journey wouldn't be complete without a stroll through a bunch of trees, but maybe they might go well with the first fashion accessory you picked up. Located in Montreal's primary convention hall, Le Palais des Congrès, this truly unique work of art not only goes well with some giant accessories, but serves really well for the fourth landmark. second destination so it took us a lot of time but I hope we'll have much more fun with the good food on to the next one okay we're at the fourth landmark and we found some big red trees for the fifth and final clue you're almost there this is an incredible sight directly in front of you but you may not want to miss the eye staring back down at you You're almost there. This is an incredible sight directly in front of you, but you may not want to miss the eye staring back down at you. Located in the middle of Montreal's cultural sector, Complexe des Jardins is the home of a combination of a massive fountain and massive opening staring down as the water gushes up. This serves as the final landmark before the finish line. Okay, so uh, at our last landmark, we think that it's some sort of art piece that is um, that that is staring down at us. And it talked about like plants and they're very beautiful. Like, well, we think it's plants because there's a whole bit of déjà vu, déjà vu, you know, might be pretty. So. Yeah. Oh, you're saying the jardin is jardin? Yeah, something. Yeah. It, mm. Not really. It's a company, but still. Okay, we'll see. We're gonna find out. There's something coming up. It's really impressive. So I think we're going in the right direction. So we think that the eye staring back at you thing is some some sort of like a beauty like this. It's quite impressive. Now that the participants have found all five landmarks, they can make their way to this spot just off of St. Catherine Street to claim their victory.
after a really really long walk we finally found the Berlin Wall. A journey wouldn't be complete without a stroll through a bunch of trees but maybe they might go well with the first fashion accessory you picked up. Wow! Yeah, that's right. Okay, so unfortunately, we got news that uh, the second challenge is over and the set 5Bs won the challenge. So, although the challenge was really, really fun. It was extremely tiring and it took a lot of time to reach places so that's why we're a little relieved that uh, the race is finished but we're happy for the sec 5 bs that they won but we wish we could have won ourselves but i guess another time congratulations sec 5 b having arrived first to the finish line congratulations secondary 5b on your victory thank you for watching today's challenge Stay tuned next week as we revisit one of our past challenges but also push the secondary fives into another task. Hello, my name is Meir Khashkashian and this is Sago Lohudyal, staff member of Surpago. Now I'm going to show him a flag and he has to guess the flag. This is the flag. Wow. Let me think. <laughs> it's right in Uzbekistan. Oh. <laughs> Thank you for watching SHTV. I'm standing near one of the quaintest streets in Old Montreal, Saint Amab. Before we leave, let's show you some clips from our upcoming trip destination, New York City.